was, of course, introducing much that was not concerned particularly with, with, with 20th century music. The contemporary music policy became the actively influential thing because this was one of the places where there was a coherent view of what was important in 20th century music, which was entirely divorced from nationalist considerations. From about 19... 53 to 1963, say, that Dartington led the way, I think, in uh, promoting contemporary music and the new wave of contemporary music. What was interesting was that the press also became very much more knowledgeable about contemporary music and more sympathetic to it than they had been before, which was all of this produced a wonderful atmosphere for all of these younger composers who developed and were supported and were encouraged. And it, uh, one always found it was William behind all of this that was making this possible. I heard Elliot Carter's first quartet in Rome in 1954, and in 1955 it appeared at the summer school. I heard La Marte Saint Maître in Baden-Baden in 1955, and that was very soon at the summer school as well, as well as other works of Boulet, and then Maxwell Davis and Berio. And uh, these names were, I think they were detested by, by many at the BBC. And the unyielding rigor of music like this was precisely what they detested. Over the years, the championing of new music has created a completely different standard of instrumental virtuosity. This is Christian Lindbeck from Sweden, giving a thoroughly brazen start to a Dartington evening concert.
Stravinsky visited the summer school in 1957. Glock had to fight his battles for new music and even for the proper recognition of one of the giants of the 20th century. Stravinsky was really held in, in, in no respect at all. In fact, he, he was belittled to a ridiculous extent. And I remember that when Agon was done, the Times wrote that it had no rhythm. Now, to say that uh, Anything of Stravinsky's has no rhythm. It's like saying that uh, Bach's Kunst der Fuge is sadly lacking in contrapuntal skill, or that Einstein was a dunce at mathematics, or that uh, Titian was colorblind. It was an extraordinary situation that one, one had to fight for a musician who was uh, over 75 and uh, to some of us the greatest living composer. Just before you drop dead, <laughs> it's slow and it's high and you're being tentative, which makes it twice as hard. Will you now throw all caution to the wind, stand up and yell? Throwing all caution to the winds was what the BBC did in 1959. To his considerable surprise, Glock was invited to become its controller of music. The job gave him power and patronage on a grand scale. He was at last in a position to put his beliefs into action. essence of, of the early stages of, of William's revolution at the BBC was its crossing of style, era, and all, all other barriers, and the intermingling or, or, or the straight juxtaposing of opposites or likenesses across the centuries. BBC followed quite naturally from all sorts of things, really, although it caused such surprise. You, you know that Walter Legg wrote me an entrancing note when my appointment was made public on February the 13th, 1959. Dear William, I don't know whether I'm more surprised or delighted. I feel rather as though I were a citizen of Wittenberg in 1536 and Luther had just been elected Pope. 